Hey there. In the last lesson, we got a picture of what success might look and feel like for us. And then we worked backwards towards closing the gap between point A and point B to begin identifying the steps that will get us from here to there. But you may have felt some resistance as you came through that process. Most of that resistance comes from our beliefs about who we are and about what's possible. So remember, you already made at least one huge shift in the past that got you from where you were then to where you are right now today. Remember all of the blocks that you moved past to get to that, this particular spot. When you realize that you've already worked through some of these and grown your art practice 10 times from where it was back then, you can be confident that you can do it again. Because the secret to closing the gap between where you are and where you want to be is to change your beliefs about what's possible. Because what got you here won't get you there. So in this lesson, we're going to identify the beliefs that got you here so that we can reframe them to get you there. How you see art, money, and business has everything to do with how, what you see as being possible. So we're going to be talking about and focusing on possibility. What we think is possible is shaped by our, by our assumptions and the stories we tell ourselves. Art is about making things that connect with an audience. In its simplest form, business is simply getting paid to solve a problem. And money, money is just an energy of exchange that allows you to have greater impact. So let's open the workbook, download it if you haven't done that already, and let's dive into what some of those existing beliefs are. So pause the video while you do that and then come on back. So if you're looking at step one of the workbook, you'll see a list there of different beliefs that our culture has around art the practice of making art, the practice of making money from art, and the practice of building an engaged audience and building a business around art. We've all got stereotypes about these things that we've absorbed from our culture. And once we identify which ones we really are tied into, it becomes so much easier to then reframe them into possibility. So look through this list and check the ones that resonate with you. Check the ones that you have a strong feeling about. Any and every last one of them. And if you want to, add any additional ones in at the end of that list. Then come on back. Now in step two, I want you to pick the, the belief that stands out most for you. So pick just one of them, the one that really feels uh, like it's resonating in your gut. What job was that belief doing for you in the past? How did it help you? How did it protect you? What was it doing for you? Because all of our beliefs are built out of our limbic system's desire to protect us. Beliefs come from our mind's desire to protect us. So choose the belief that stands out most for you and then consider how it was there to help you along the way in getting to where you are now. Now in step three, I want you to imagine what your creative practice would look like if you keep on holding on to that belief for the next five years or even 10 years. So visualize what not letting it go would do. What will things look like if you hang on to that? And now in step four, I want you to imagine releasing that limitation and letting it go. And in the space below, 
reframe that limitation as an opportunity or possibility. So, for example, let's think about some um, real prime examples of that that we've all experienced in the studio. So, say you've made a painting and all of the colors have mixed together and look like mud. How can you reframe that? On a real simple level, you can reframe it as, now I know how to mix really strong neutral colors. Now that's a, an overly simplistic example, but you see how I took something that was a negative and reframed it as a positive or as a possibility. So when you reframe your beliefs, even just a tiny little bit, you give yourself permission to be imperfect and you give yourself the opportunity to learn about what possibilities are there. So dive in and try that reframing process. Now think for a little while here in step number six about where some of those beliefs came from. Where did they crop up? And again, think about how they served you in the past. And then in step seven, I want you to go through that reframing process again and list those beliefs as opportunities or possibilities. Hold on to that list, put it out where you can see it often and see how that begins to impact your perception of what the possibilities and opportunities are. Now on to the next lesson.